For years, audiences were captivated by John Boy's wisdom, wit, and unwavering integrity. But then, like a sudden gust of wind on a summer's eve, Richard Thomas vanished from the spotlight, leaving fans confused and questioning. What really happened to Richard Thomas? Was it the pressures of fame that led him astray? Or perhaps a desire to break free from the shadow of his most famous role? Join us as we unravel what really happened to Richard Thomas, the star in famous TV show The Waltons, Early Life and Education. Richard Earl Thomas, the iconic actor renowned for his role as John Boy Walton, came into this world on June 13, 1951 in Manhattan. His parents, Barbara Fallis and Richard S. Thomas, were no ordinary individuals. They dazzled as dancers with the prestigious New York City Ballet and were the proud owners of the esteemed New York School of Ballet. Despite his talents and charm, Thomas faced early setbacks. A distinguishing birthmark on his left cheek became a stumbling block, leading to a rejection for a television commercial role during his youth. Undeterred, Thomas pursued his education at two exclusive boys' day schools in Manhattan, first at Allen Stevenson School, then at the now-closed McBurney School. Later, he embarked on a scholarly journey at Columbia College, part of Columbia University, initially majoring in Chinese before switching to English. However, fate had other plans for Thomas. When he clinched the role in the Waltons, he made the difficult decision to leave Columbia during his junior year to fully commit to his burgeoning acting career in Los Angeles, Rise of a Star. Richard Thomas didn't just step into the spotlight, he practically grew up in it. His journey began in 1958 at the tender age of seven, when he debuted on Broadway in Sunrise at Campobello. His talent quickly caught the eye of television producers, leading to his appearance in the prestigious Hallmark Hall of Fame NBC television presentation of Ibsen's A Doll's House, alongside luminaries like Julie Harris, Christopher Plummer, and Hume Cronin. His foray into daytime TV was followed by notable appearances in soap operas like The Edge of Night in 1961 and A Flame in the Wind and As the World Turns between 1966 and 1967. In 1970, he guest starred on NBC's Bonanza, showcasing his versatility and paving the way for his ascent to stardom. That same year, Thomas landed his first major film role in Winning, starring opposite the legendary Paul Newman in a gripping tale of auto racing. His star continued to rise as he secured a role in Last Summer, a poignant coming-of-age movie alongside Bruce Davidson and Barbara Hershey. Thomas didn't shy away from challenging roles, as evidenced by his portrayal in The Todd Killings 1970, a gripping psychological thriller based on the crimes of serial killer Charles Schmid. Directed by Barry Shear and released by National General Pictures, the film showcased Thomas's depth and range as an actor. His talent wasn't limited to the big screen. Thomas also took the lead in Cactus in the Snow, an independent production that further solidified his reputation as a versatile and talented actor, willing to take on diverse roles across different mediums. As time passed, the film The Homecoming A Christmas Story became increasingly rare and challenging to find, limiting its initial audience. However, by early 1972, Richard Thomas had already established himself as a talented actor. It was during this period that he skyrocketed to international fame for his portrayal of John Boy Walton in the beloved TV series The Waltons, based on the life of writer Earl Hamner Jr. The Homecoming, which aired in 1971 as a CBS television film, served as the precursor to The Waltons. Thomas's performance in this film was pivotal, leading to the development of the series, which he would go on to star in for 122 episodes. This was a significant milestone in Thomas's career, propelling him into the spotlight as a distinguished actor. Despite his success, Thomas made the difficult decision to depart from The Waltons in March 1977. The role of John Boy Walton was then assumed by Robert Whiteman. Thomas's departure marked the end of an era for the show, as viewers had grown accustomed to his portrayal of the beloved character. Leaving the Waltons Richard revealed that he chose to leave the show to avoid being typecast. Despite the allure of a lead role in a successful TV series, Thomas believed that staying on the Waltons could limit his future acting opportunities. 
In a recent conversation with former co-star Judy Norton, Thomas shared his reluctance to depart from the close-knit Walton family, but emphasized the necessity of his decision. Portraying John Boy, the eldest son in the Walton family, was a defining role for Thomas, but after five seasons, he felt the need to explore other characters. At 26, Thomas felt he had outgrown the character's age and storyline. He humorously reflected on his decision, recognizing that he might not have had the same perspective at a younger age. Thomas also expressed concerns about being forever associated with John Boy if he stayed on the show. He believed that leaving would allow him to pursue a broader range of roles and prevent him from being stuck in the image of John Boy Walton. This decision marked a turning point in Thomas's career, demonstrating his willingness to take risks and seek new challenges in his acting journey. Richard Thomas revealed that his decision to leave The Waltons stemmed from a desire to explore other opportunities beyond the show's confines. Despite his young age, he realized the potential impact of committing to a long-running series. Thomas believed that after dedicating five years to The Waltons, it would take another decade to accumulate a body of work that could match the influence of a series regular. While Thomas harbored no regrets about his choice, parting ways with the show proved to be emotionally challenging. The bond he formed with his on-screen family made saying goodbye incredibly difficult. After filming his final episode as a series regular, Thomas fell seriously ill for several weeks, attributing it to the emotional upheaval of leaving the show and his beloved castmates behind. Returning as a guest star for a few episodes in seasons 6 and 7, Thomas aimed to dispel any misconceptions about his departure. He wanted fans to know that his decision was not fueled by dissatisfaction or conflict, but rather a desire for personal and professional growth. Reflecting on his departure, Thomas admitted that while he made the decision objectively, experiencing the actual departure was far from easy. The emotional toll of leaving a show he cherished was evident, and he struggled with the farewells. His candidness about the complexities of leaving The Waltons offers a glimpse into the bittersweet nature of transitioning from one chapter of life to the next. Richard Thomas, despite his successful tenure as John Boy Walton, decided not to permanently return to The Waltons. Consequently, in Season 8, the role of John Boy was reassigned to Robert Whiteman. Thomas and Whiteman had collaborated on the TV movie No Other Love, forging a positive relationship. Thomas supported Whiteman's casting, acknowledging his talent and suitability for the role. However, seeing another actor embody John Boy was a peculiar experience for Thomas, as he had become synonymous with the character. Thomas expressed empathy for Whiteman, recognizing the challenges he would face in winning over the audience as the new John Boy. Despite his confidence in Whiteman's abilities, Thomas understood the difficulty of accepting a new actor in a role so closely associated with him. His reflections offer insight into the complexities of transitioning a character from one actor to another in a long-running series. Enormous love for filming. Richard Thomas made a triumphant return to the role of John Boy Walton in the 1990s, starring in three TV movies based on The Waltons, including the heartwarming A Walton Thanksgiving Reunion in 1993. Despite leaving the series earlier, Thomas's connection to the character remained strong, demonstrating his enduring appeal to audiences. Thomas's talent was recognized early on, earning him an Emmy Award for Best Actor in a Dramatic Series in 1973. He showcased his versatility by portraying the complex character of Kenneth Kinsolving, a murderer and rapist, in You'll Like My Mother, 1972, starring alongside Patty Duke. This departure from his wholesome image as John Boy highlighted his range as an actor. Continuing to captivate audiences, Thomas took on challenging roles in TV movies such as Private Henry Fleming in The Red Badge of Courage, 1974, and Paul Baumer in All Quiet on the Western Front, 1979. He further showcased his acting prowess in a variety of roles, including Colonel Warner's son in Roots, The Next Generations, 1979, the titular character in Living Proof, The Hank Williams Jr. Story, 1983, and Jim in Hobson's Choice, 1983. Thomas's talent extended to the stage, as seen in his Broadway return in Lanford Wilson's Fifth of July in 1980. That same year, 
he mesmerized audiences as Shad in the sci-fi adventure Battle Beyond the Stars, where he played a young farmer fighting to save his planet from invasion. Thomas's ability to portray diverse characters across different mediums solidifies his status as a versatile and accomplished actor. Richard Thomas's theatrical journey continued to flourish beyond television and film, showcasing his remarkable talent on stage. In 1987, he mesmerized audiences in Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. with his solo performance in Citizen Tom Paine, portraying Paine with a fierce passion for freedom. His portrayal was described as that of a star-spangled tiger, embodying Paine's relentless pursuit of liberty during the bicentennial year of the United States Constitution. Thomas's stage presence continued to captivate, as seen in his performance alongside Nathan Lane in Terence McNally's The Lisbon Traviata at the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles in 1990. His versatility shone through in 1993 when he took on the title role in a Shakespeare theater production of Richard II in Washington, D.C., showcasing his range as a dramatic actor. Transitioning back to the screen, Thomas delivered compelling performances in various TV movies, including Death in Small Doses, 1995, directed by Sandra Locke, and The Christmas Box, 1995, alongside Maureen O'Hara and Annette O'Toole, showcasing his ability to bring depth and emotion to his roles. Thomas's stage repertoire expanded with notable performances at the Hartford stage in Connecticut. From the melancholic Prince Hamlet in 1987, to the scheming Richard III in 1994, Thomas proved his prowess in portraying complex characters. His stage journey continued with Peer Gint in 1989 and Tiny Alice in 1996, further establishing him as a versatile stage actor. In 1997 and 1998, Thomas ventured into television, portraying degenerate Joe Green in several episodes of Touched by an Angel and its spin-off, Promised Land, showcasing his ability to seamlessly transition between mediums. Thomas's stage presence extended across the Atlantic, with a notable performance in London's West End in 2001 in Yasmina Reza's Art, alongside Judd Hirsch. His commitment to the stage remained steadfast, with performances in Central Park's The Public Theatre production of As You Like It 2005, Broadway's Democracy 2004, and Off-Broadway's The Stendhal Syndrome 2005, demonstrating his enduring passion for the craft. Richard Thomas's career continued to flourish, showcasing his versatility across various mediums. In addition to his television and film work, Thomas ventured into hosting the PAX TV series, It's a Miracle. He also starred in the series Just Cause in 2003, further solidifying his presence on the small screen. Thomas's stage presence remained strong, embarking on an American theater tour of Reginald Rose's Twelve Angry Men in 2006. His portrayal of Juror 8 opposite George Wendt's Juror 1 captivated audiences, highlighting his ability to command the stage. In 2009 and 2010, Thomas graced Broadway in David Mamet's Race, directed by Mamet himself, and featuring a stellar cast including James Spader, David Allen Greer, and Kerry Washington. His performance showcased his depth as an actor, earning him acclaim from critics and audiences alike. Continuing his theatrical journey, Thomas starred in Timon of Athens at the off-Broadway New York Public Theater in February and March 2011, further solidifying his reputation as a skilled stage actor. His television work remained prominent, with notable roles in FX Network's The Americans as Frank God, adding another layer to his diverse acting portfolio. His stage presence extended to the 2017 Broadway revival of The Little Foxes, earning him a Tony Award nomination for Best Featured Actor in a Play. Thomas's versatility was further highlighted in his portrayal of Ebenezer Scrooge in Pittsburgh CLO's production of A Musical Christmas Carol in December 2018. In February 2021, Thomas appeared in the Amazon thriller drama series Tell Me Your Secrets, showcasing his ability to captivate audiences with his compelling performances. He continued to impress in January 2022, portraying Wendy Bird's estranged father, Nathan Davis, in three episodes of season four of the Netflix series Ozark. Thomas's stage presence continued to captivate audiences as he starred as Atticus Finch in a national Broadway tour of Harper Lee's novel To Kill a Mockingbird, 
starting in April 2022, demonstrating his enduring talent and appeal. His contribution to the literary world is also noteworthy, with Thomas narrating over 340 books on Audible as of January 2023, further solidifying his reputation as a multifaceted and talented artist. Accident during the Emmys. On his way to the 1973 Emmy Awards, Richard Thomas encountered a memorable and somewhat humorous incident that left a lasting impression. While the prospect of winning was exciting, the thought of delivering an acceptance speech made him nervous. As he made his way to the stage after winning an Emmy, a video captured his shock and surprise. In his acceptance speech, Thomas shared an amusing anecdote with the audience. He recounted a moment of panic on his way to the ceremony when he realized he had nothing prepared to say. Well, I should tell you now that on the way to change into this suit coming downtown, it suddenly occurred to me that if I had to come up here and say something tonight, I would have nothing to say. So I started thinking of something to say and I destroyed my car, he confessed, eliciting laughter from the crowd. Despite his lack of preparation, Thomas managed to compose a brief and impromptu speech showcasing his wit and ability to think on his feet. He explained that he had been preoccupied with thoughts of what to say for his acceptance speech and ended up in a car accident. Thomas recounted, Here I am, a young star in Hollywood with my first car, a white Volvo station wagon. I wasn't exactly on the fast track, but I was driving and thought, you might win this thing. You're not going to, but you might. If you do, what the hell are you going to say? I had no idea. As he continued to reflect on the incident, Thomas humorously recalled how he rear-ended the car in front of him while lost in thought. Although the accident was not severe, it left his car damaged enough to require repairs. Thomas drove home, still forgetting to plan his acceptance speech. However, when his name was called at the awards ceremony, he pulled himself together and took the stage. Despite his initial shock, Thomas managed to express his gratitude to everyone he needed to thank. This incident highlighted a contrast between Thomas and the character he portrayed in The Waltons. While John Boy Walton was portrayed as a responsible and mature young man, Thomas in real life was a New York-raised actor who did not even obtain a driver's license until he was in his early 20s, solely because the series required him to drive a truck on screen. Thomas's Ghastly Motorcycle Accident Richard faced a significant challenge during the filming of The Waltons. In the fifth season, an episode titled The First Edition featured John Boy Walton walking with a cane. What many fans may not realize is that Thomas was not just acting, he was dealing with a real injury from a motorcycle accident that nearly took his life. The incident occurred in 1976, while Thomas was also working on a James Dean tribute film called September 30th, 1955. Directed and written by James Bridges, the movie was based on Bridges' own story about his feelings on the day James Dean died. Initially, Bridges had reservations about casting Thomas because he had never seen The Waltons. However, those reservations quickly faded when Thomas walked into his office. I resisted the suggestion of Richard Thomas never having seen The Waltons, Bridges recalled. But the minute he walked into my office, I fell in love with him. Despite his injury and the challenges it posed, Thomas continued to work on both projects. His dedication and professionalism were evident, as he managed to deliver a compelling performance despite his physical limitations. However, disaster struck in the form of a horrific motorcycle accident that could have cost Richard Thomas his life. Bridges described the incident, saying, It was the scene where Richard revs up his motorcycle in defiance of the town's people at the homecoming parade. He looked over his shoulder and took off. The motorcycle jolted forward and headed for the flatbed of a truck. Quick thinking on Thomas's part allowed him to jump to safety, narrowly avoiding a catastrophic injury or even a fatal accident. However, he did sustain a severe injury, breaking his ankle in two places. As a result of the accident, filming for the movie was delayed by over a year. Despite the pain and challenges stemming from the accident, Thomas continued to appear on The Waltons, while managing his injury. He displayed remarkable determination and resilience during this time, never letting his injury hinder his commitment to his craft or his fans. In interviews, Thomas reflected on his connection to James Dean. 
he shared that he was too young to have been personally affected by Dean's death, stating, I wasn't overcome with grief on the day James Dean died. I was just four at the time. As an actor, Richard Thomas developed a deep respect for James Dean's unique talent. He expressed his admiration, saying, Of course, Dean figures prominently in the feelings of any actor alive today. I have a tremendous appreciation for his performances, but I'm not influenced by them. You cannot be influenced by a man like James Dean and retain an ounce of your own identity as an actor. That would be like a high school poet trying to imitate E.E. E. Cummings. For fans of The Waltons who watched Thomas in September 30, 1955, it must have been a shock to see the actor they associated with John Boy portraying a character so vastly different. Thomas acknowledged this stark contrast, saying, The boy I played in September 30, 1955 is not at all like John Boy. He sees himself as dangerous and unpredictable, and he plays with the ladies, which is a departure for me. This demonstrates Thomas's versatility as an actor, able to embody vastly different characters with ease. Despite his admiration for James Dean, Thomas remained true to his unique style, ensuring that his performances were always authentic to himself. Richard Thomas's personal life. Richard Thomas's personal life has had its share of significant moments. He married Alma Gonzalez in 1975, and about a year later, the couple welcomed a son. However, the family dynamics changed drastically in 1981 when the couple welcomed triplet daughters, who became the gems of their family. Despite the joy of expanding their family, Thomas's relationship with Gonzalez became rocky, leading to their divorce in 1993. Following his divorce, Thomas found love again and married Santa Fe art dealer Georgiana Bischoff on November 20, 1994. Their union was blessed with a son in 1996. Additionally, Thomas adopted Bishop's two daughters from her previous marriages, further solidifying their family bond. Since then, Thomas and Bischoff have remained together, leading a quiet life in New York. Despite the ups and downs of his personal life, Thomas has continued to focus on his acting career, balancing the demands of his profession with the joys and challenges of family life. Richard Thomas's Net Worth and Real Estate Richard Thomas, an American actor, has accumulated a net worth of $6 million through his successful career. In 1995, Richard and Georgina purchased a home in Los Angeles's Los Feliz neighborhood for $600,000. They later sold this property in June 2004 for $1.765 million. Following this, in July 2004, Richard and Georgina purchased a 1,600-square-foot apartment in the Alwyn Court building in New York City for $1.55 million. They listed this apartment for sale in September 2017 for $3 million, eventually selling it in October 2021 for $1.85 million. Despite these changes in residence, they now primarily reside in Santa Fe, New Mexico. These real estate transactions offer a glimpse into Richard Thomas's life beyond the screen, showing his investments in properties across different cities. Despite fluctuations in the housing market, Thomas and his wife have navigated these changes, establishing homes in various locations. Their move to Santa Fe, New Mexico suggests a shift towards a more tranquil and perhaps more permanent living arrangement. What really happened to Richard Thomas? Richard Thomas was involved in a harrowing car accident on September 17, 2023, which left him critically injured. The news of the accident quickly spread across the internet, causing concern among his fans who were eager to know his condition. While the specifics of the accident are still under investigation, reports indicate that it was a serious crash. The circumstances surrounding the incident are unclear, and authorities are working to determine the cause. The accident took place on a road in Minnesota, United States, but the exact location has not been disclosed. Richard Thomas, renowned for his portrayal of John Boy Walton in the beloved television series The Waltons, has enjoyed a successful career in the entertainment industry. His fans are deeply worried about his well-being and are eagerly awaiting updates on his condition. The collision occurred when Thomas's car collided with another vehicle on the highway, resulting in a fatal crash. The impact caused severe injuries to Thomas, prompting his immediate transport to the Centricare St. Cloud Hospital for urgent medical attention. 
As the investigation into the accident continues, fans and well-wishers are sending their thoughts and prayers to Richard Thomas, hoping for his swift recovery. The circumstances surrounding Richard Thomas's accident remain unclear, and authorities are diligently investigating to uncover the cause of the crash. Despite ongoing efforts, no official details have been released to the public, leaving fans and well-wishers eager for updates. As of this month, March 2024, there has been no official update on Richard Thomas's condition following the accident on September 17, 2023. Reports indicate that he sustained critical injuries, but there has been no news of his recovery since then. No one knows what really happened to Richard Thomas. Despite the lack of updates, it's important to note that Richard Thomas is alive, contrary to unfounded rumors suggesting otherwise. The outpouring of concern and support from fans on social media platforms highlights the impact of his work and the affection people have for him. The cause of the accident remains a focal point of the investigation. The seriousness of the incident has prompted a thorough inquiry to uncover the circumstances leading to the crash. Questions linger about whether Richard Thomas was at fault or if other factors contributed to the accident's occurrence. Depending on the investigation's findings, legal actions may be pursued against any responsible parties. Additionally, the outcome could lead to potential changes in traffic regulations or road safety measures in the accident's vicinity. However, until the investigation concludes, the precise legal and regulatory implications remain uncertain. Despite the uncertainties surrounding the accident, the important thing is that Richard Thomas is still here with us, and his presence in the entertainment world continues to be cherished. Attaining Legendary Status With unwavering determination, Richard Thomas embraced life with a newfound perspective, shaped by the harsh realities of adversity. I'm really, really good under the circumstances, he revealed from his hospital bed, highlighting his resilience. He mused about the will to live, noting that it is often tested by the severity of one's challenges. Despite his frail health, Thomas expressed no complaints. Instead, he radiated gratitude for the precious gift of life. Even in the face of overwhelming odds, he clung to optimism, demonstrating a remarkable outlook on life. His perspective had undergone a profound metamorphosis, and he now cherished each day with newfound intensity. Thomas spoke fondly of his wife, Georgiana, whom he referred to as his guardian angel. He praised her unwavering support, seeing her as the most beautiful guardian angel on earth. Their bond was so strong that it seemed to transcend the boundaries of this world. In the wake of this tragic accident, the world watched, waited, and hoped for Richard Thomas's miraculous recovery. What do you think really happened to Richard Thomas? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.